Can you write every fraction as a sum of unit fraction? Hmm, that's interesting. Well, let's read it once again. The question is, can you write every fraction as a sum of unit fraction? Well, in this video, we'll explore and figure out if we can write every fraction as a sum of unit fraction. Let's start with one whole. A circle here represents one whole. Now let's talk about fractions. That means dividing whole into equal parts. So let me draw a vertical line going through its center. So this vertical line divides the circle into two equal parts. And now I'm going to shade one half of it. Let us assume that these two parts are absolutely equal, right? Only then we have fractions, correct? So we have shaded one part out of two. So half of the circle has been shaded. Now the shaded portion is one half. Let me draw a horizontal line going through the center of the circle. So in that case, this horizontal line is going to divide the circle now into quarters, four equal parts. Okay, so let's shade the quarter now. So we can shade the quarter, let me shade it in red. So that is my quarter portion of the circle. So now I have a circle which has been divided into four equal parts, out of which one half is shaded in blue and one quarter is shaded in red. So what I can write down here is how much portion is shaded or what fraction of the circle is shaded. Well, it is three-fourths, correct? Yes. So three-fourths of the circle is shaded which I can write as half of it is blue and quarter of it is red. So I can write 3 fourth as combination of 1 over 2 half plus 1 over 4 quarter. Well, these two are unit fractions. So I have written a fraction as a combination of two unit fractions. So now I think we can write at least some fractions as combination of unit fractions. That's interesting. Well, you'll be surprised to know that Egyptians could write each and every fraction as a combination of unit fraction and that is what fascinated me. And today therefore we call these fractions as Egyptian unit fractions. So let's talk first about these unit fractions. So as you can see, I'm calling 1 over 2 and 1 over 4 as unit fraction, mainly because in the numerator we have number 1, unit 1. So all the fractions which have numerator of 1, denominator can be anything, are called unit fractions. For example, 1 over 2, 1 over 3, 1 over 4, 1 over 5, and so on. We can say reciprocal of a number, right? So I can write this as 1 over n. So all these are proper unit fractions. They have 1 in the numerator and denominator can be any whole number. Well, I use the word proper fractions, proper unit fractions, mainly because I think it's a good idea to share with you that we could have written 1 over 1 also, right? So that becomes kind of a whole number, right? So this one, 1 over 1, is kind of improper. So we are calling these fractions as proper unit fraction. and this one as improper. 
unit fraction. It is indeed a unit fraction. Reason is simple. The numerator has number 1, right? So, we can actually write numbers with numerator as 1 and denominator anything. So, 1 is the only improper unit fraction. All of the fractions are called proper unit fractions. As you can see, half is the greatest proper unit fraction, correct? Now, as you have seen here, we could write 3 over 4 as a combination of 1 over 2 and 1 over 4. That means I have written at least one fraction as a combination of unit fraction. Now in this video, I am thinking of exploring, can we write a unit fraction as a combination of unit fraction? Wow, that will be great. Uh, what am I trying to say? Well, I'm trying to say that can we write half, which is a unit fraction, as a combination of unit fraction. That means kind of half plus, let's say, 1 over 3, which is less than half. So, 1 over 3 plus something. And if that something could be a unit fraction itself. Well, let's try. Okay. So, what could be that number? Well, that number, if it exists, it should be half minus 1 over 3, right? So, let's try it out. What is half minus 1 over 3? Half minus 1 over 3, I have to take common denominator of 6, right? Then, multiply these by 3 to get 6 in the denominator. So, you get 3 minus these by 2. And I get 3 minus 2 is 1. I get 1 over 6. That means 1 over 6 could be written here. So half could, could be written as 1 over 3 plus 1 over 6. Wow! So I have written a unit fraction as a combination of two unit fractions. That's great! Can we continue this process? Let me try with 1 over 3. If I write 1 over 3, then the number lower than 1 over 3 is 1 over 4. So it could be written as 1 over 4 plus something. Now, what should be that something? Well, that something has to be 1 over 3 minus 1 over 4. That means a common denominator of 12 and then we have 4 minus 3. That gives our answer. 4 minus 3 is 1. So we get 1 over 12. So I can write this as 1 over 12. That means I can write 1 over 3 also as a combination of two unit fractions. Let me try 1 over 4. 1 over 4, number less than 1 over 4 is 1 over 5. 1 over 5 plus something. And that something should be 1 over 4 minus 1 over 5. That means cross multiply 5 minus 4 over 20. Or 5 minus 4 is 1. So 1 over 20. So that means I can write even a unit fraction as a combination of unit fraction. Let me generalize. If I write 1 over n, what do I get? Okay, if I write, let's continue, 1 over n. Then, what I observe here is that the next number should be 1 over n plus 1. Correct? For 1 over 3, it was 1 over 4 plus something. For 1 over 4, it was 1 over 5 plus something else, right? Plus what? That means, now I should take away from 1 over n, 1 over n plus 1 and get my answer. Well, that's one way of doing it. How about looking back into a pattern? Let's go back. What do we see here? We see that we get 6 by multiplying 2 and 3. 2 times 3 is 6. 
3 times 4 is 12, 4 times 5 is 20. So the next number here should be n times n plus 1. Let's write it down. n times n plus 1 and a unit fraction. Does this work or not? Well, that is an exercise for you to do, okay? So figure it out. If it works, that means we can even write every unit fraction as a sum of unit fraction. I hope that will be a very interesting exercise for you to check. And I wish that you explore more and find something more about unit fractions. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed making it. All the best and explore more about Egyptians unit fractions. Thank you and all the best.